Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. And as we begin today, just let me say thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for the effort you put into this. I know that as you prepare for the exam, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears goes into this. Thank you for the effort you put into this. I know that it takes takes a lot on your end, and I want to be as helpful as I can in this whole process to help you dominate on test day. So today I've got a practice question for you. This is related to the musculoskeletal system. So as you recall, in this podcast, we go through the FSBBT's published content outline. So as far as what is on the test, you can see this all in the content outline. The musculoskeletal system is the largest single system on the exam with somewhere between 44 and 54 questions related to it. So you can expect questions from examination to differential diagnosis and on to interventions in the musculoskeletal system throughout the exam. Remember, on test day, all the questions are randomized, so you won't see all of the muscular questions together, all the neuro questions together. Rather, it will be randomized throughout, and your job is just to answer each question as it comes across. So the goal for today is to go through a practice question, but before we begin, just a quick reminder, check out ptfinalexam.com for all of our ongoing courses. We're just about to start our April crash, cor crash course cohort. Kind of a mouthful. The April crash course, this is where we go three weeks through the cardio, muscular, and neuro system. So it really is a, a brief but important reminder of the big three systems. I've had many, many students, they report back saying that it got them another good handful of questions correct on test day. It really boosted their study during the last few weeks when they knew they needed to be studying something and they wanted to have something, they wanted to have a little more structure to their study time, but not just cram the night before. This is where the crash course is extremely, extremely helpful. So be sure to check that out. If you have a cohort of five or more, we can get you some pretty sweet discounts. Just go over to ptfinalexam.com slash contact, and we can get you your discount for your cohort. All right, let's go ahead and dive into our question now. So this practice question related to the musculoskeletal system on the exam. This one's actually related directly to regenerative medicine. So on the FSBPT content outline, they added for 2024 questions about regenerative medicine. And so this is a question related directly to that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into our question. What we'll do as per our usual, I'll read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about it together. Here we go. A patient received an autologous chondrocyte implantation to the right knee medial femoral condyle one week ago and is attending physical therapy post-surgically. Which of the following interventions will be most appropriate at this phase of healing? So we've got a patient who received an autologous chondrocyte implantation to the right knee medial femoral condyle one week ago and is attending physical therapy post-surgically. Which of the following interventions will be most appropriate at this phase of healing? One, full weight bearing in extension only. Two, low impact activities such as swimming, swimming and cycling. Three, protected weight bearing. And four, protective bracing with full range of motion. So again, autologous chondrocyte implantation one week ago to the right knee medial femoral condyle. Uh, what's the most appropriate here? Full weight bearing in extension only. Low impact activities such as swimming and cycling. Protected weight bearing and four, protective bracing with full range of motion. So in this question, when you consider an autologous chondrocyte implantation, the key with autologous chondrocyte implantations or ACIs is that you have taken a culture of chondrocytes, so essentially cartilage creating cells, chondrocytes. You take a culture of those and you grow it in a lab. You mix it all up into a nice slurry. It's kind of like a, a, a cartilage smoothie and then it's reinserted back into the damaged cartilage area on the knee, or really anywhere you have damaged cartilage, but they have to have a protective membrane in place. So this synthetic membrane is meant to hold the smoothie in place, that, eight, that autologous chondrocyte implantation. So therefore, the key during, especially during the first eight to 12 weeks, is protected weight bearing. So option C, protected weight bearing, this is the most correct answer, simply because you must maintain either a non-weight bearing or partial weight bearing status if you have some type of ACA, ACI on the femoral condyles. Now, this could be different in the case that you had an ACI on the, on the patella, so on the retropatellar cartilage, just because on the back of the, of the patella, you don't have to worry so much about weight bearing, but you do have to worry about significant range of motion. So generally speaking, when it comes to ACIs, they're going to be in protected weight bearing, so either non-weight bearing or partial weight bearing during the first eight to 12 weeks. 
you would also have limitations in range of motion. You'd have protected range of motion, indicating you would begin with early but controlled range of motion and progressing to full throughout the entirety of that full that first period, that maximum protection phase. Low impact activities such as swimming and cycling. So these type of functional activities would likely be delayed until about six months post-operatively just because you have to really protect. So there's extreme protection on that synthetic membrane that's holding that cartilage slurry in place. And then finally, you would avoid full weight bearing. So option one, full weight bearing and extension. The weight bearing is going to damage or disrupt that synthetic membrane with the chondrocytes. And so therefore, this is typically delayed until eight to 12 weeks. If instead you had a patellar defect that was that had the ACI placed, then you would only have weight bearing precautions up until about four weeks. So, and again, the key there is that you're not actually bearing weight through the patella. However, range of motion would significantly affect the pressure on the posterior patella. So patellar defects require about four weeks of protected weight bearing. Uh, a condylar ACI would likely require somewhere between eight and 12 weeks of protected weight bearing just because you don't want to damage that synthetic membrane. So this is, as I mentioned, this is an example of the regenerative medicine that you'll see on test day. So this is a classic one, autologous chondrocyte implantation. It is in the textbooks. You'll see it in Kisner and Colby's therapeutic exercise. So definitely on the list of things they could ask you about. And again, the, I think the biggest key with ACIs is just remembering that you have pretty significant precautions during the first eight to 12 weeks because you need to protect those chondrocytes. Again, think of it like a a cartilage smoothie that is this, it's injected un, with a syringe underneath this synthetic membrane. And so again, consider that, that it's not not solid tissue yet. It takes a good solid eight to, 12, eight to 12 weeks to solidify in order to begin bearing weight. So that's an example of regenerative medicine you could see on test day. All right, so with that, we'll go ahead and bring today to a conclusion. Thanks so much for spending your time with me. I know that this is your precious study time. Hopefully you're using this during your found time. So I talk to students about found time. This is where you are either on the bus, you're driving somewhere, maybe you're on your way to clinical right now, you're exercising, whatever it is you're doing, you're very wise to use this time to study because again, it's, it's important to use your available time. And sometimes that involves using your found time, trying to find additional time that would otherwise be wasted. And by so doing, you can certainly increase your study capacity and study efficiency. And so again, my, my biggest suggestion is two to four hours most days is a really good target. Sometimes takes more, sometimes takes a little bit less. But the point is you should have that good target most days in the 10 to 12 weeks leading up until test day. All right, so with that, we'll bring it to a conclusion. If you haven't yet, be sure to leave us a review over on Google Play, Apple iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is you're listening to this podcast. Hit the subscribe button if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, if you're watching this on Instagram or TikTok or any of, the, any of the other places that we've got these videos. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe. Again, it helps so much, not just, not just to help you see our content, but also to help others see this important content. I feel like it's so helpful as people are preparing uh, like when I was at CSM, oh, hundreds, hundreds of students came by and said that they appreciated the podcast. They'd seen it, they'd heard of it, and it, it was very helpful to them as they were preparing for and passing the board exams. And that that type of feedback is is extremely rewarding, something that I want to be is extremely helpful to you. And especially in this free format, it's super fun to be able to just talk through the content give you the stuff you need and help you on your way to the test. So if you, again, if you haven't yet, it only takes like one second, go over and leave us a review. It helps so much or hit that subscribe button, whatever button it is you hit, go ahead and hit it. And it really helps as we get the word out. All right. With that, we'll bring it to a conclusion. Thanks everyone. Hope you have a fabulous study day. Stay safe out there. We'll crane fist pumps all around and I'll catch you all in the next episode. Thanks. Thanks.